Psychotherapist and Apple expert Georgia Dow is back to talk Nintendo Beats and whether the Apple Watch is turning us all into narcissists. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 334 for Friday, May 8th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome back. I am Megan Maroney. This is the show where we talk about the tech news with the people who care about it as much as you do. Now let's get to the news. Back in March, we've reported that Nintendo revealed a partnership with game publisher DNA to finally give in and create iOS games. They didn't exactly reveal what this was going to look like or when we would see it, but in an earnings call today, Nintendo's CEO and president Satoru Iwata said the first game would be released this year and then five titles would be released by 2017. Joining us to talk about this story and a few more is Georgia Dow from iMore. Welcome, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> well, as we were saying before, you were great on Twit. If people haven't seen oh, it or downloaded you. it, you should check it out. Uh, someone tweeted that you were like Silent Bob, that you didn't talk as much <laughs> as the others, but everything you said was very profound. <laughs> right. I don't know about all, everything I said was exceptionally profound, but a very cute tweet. Thank you. I love Silent Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so this news from Nintendo today, was, was it a surprise to you? I think I, it was a little bit of a surprise because Nintendo's very controlling of all of their IP. So I'm really excited. I think that this is a great move for Nintendo. They want to grow their market. Most kids are using iPhones or smartphones, Android devices. So to have their games there to grow a new generation of people that use Nintendo, I think is necessity for Nintendo right now. Right. So they said this won't be just ports of the game. Uh, the CEO said they'll be built from the ground up. Um, yeah. next, did they say which games they were going to start with first? They haven't said yet. We we can pretty much assume that it's probably going to be some of their most popular characters. But as you'd stated, a lot of people are really hoping that they're going to get to see their old favorite games ported onto. And they don't want to do that. They don't think that that's going to be good because the controls are going to be different. So they're going to build up new games. You can probably expect that Mario will be one of them no matter what. And, you know, some of the most popular games and popular characters they have, you will expect probably one from each as they come out for, but no one has said which games they're going to be at. Right. And they didn't really talk about the revenue. I mean, they said they wanted to generate revenue, but they didn't say whether they would be freemium games or not. Um, do you have a guess as to what they might look like, what the pay structure might look like? For any of these they, they, they had mentioned that they are not against having in-app purchases on the game. So we will probably unfortunately see, you know, things that you can purchase in game or extra characters that you can purchase in game as well. And I'm kind of of two minds for that. If Nintendo, that works out better for Nintendo and does not interrupt gameplay, then I'm fine with it. If it's something that you need to purchase in order to continue on, then that causes an annoyance. And I think that that would be a bad call for Nintendo. Right. And now, do you know anything about the membership service? I've read a little bit about that, uh, kind of a Nintendo membership service where they t tie together the games across the platforms. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. I haven't looked into it really well, and I'm not one to really subscribe to membership services in the first place. So, you know, hopefully these games are just, you can purchase the games just by all alone. And uh, it's probably not something that I would be interested in if they chose to go that route. Right. So let's move on. I know you're an Apple expert. So what do you think of the news we've been hearing that the upcoming relaunch of the Beats streaming music service will include not a free tier like Spotify, but some free features? What do you think about that? The first thing I thought was, oh, no, no, I like free. <laughs> Leave a free tier. I want everything to be free. Um, and then when I think about it, I want to make sure that it makes money. I want more music to be on my phone. And I think that it's fair for everyone to get a piece to that. So if Apple thinks that it's a better idea to go straight for a low subscription service and you end up paying for tiers, I really, I look, when I, after I read into it, I didn't really mind. I think that everyone deserves a piece of the pie. And though free is always better than having to pay for something, having a service that everyone, you know, benefits from is a better thing than not. And so you're, they're going straight up against Spotify. 
And, you know, there's also some rumors about them trying to say, you know, let's let's try to like pull back from people that are that are, you know, in with Spotify. So I think that there's going to be a small battle at hand. Apple, I think, has the upper hand, though, because it has such a huge subscriber base. Right. So do you use Beats now? I don't. Yeah, I subscribed I for a while um, and I thought it was totally worth it. And then I realized I was also subscribing to Pandora and, you know, I thought, well, let's just wait and see what they can do. But, you know, I've been trying to use like the Amazon music service that you get along if you're a Prime member um, and, you know, Google Play Music and, and just the interface is not as easy as Beats. I mean, for me, it was totally worth the $9.99 and I think that's what it's going to be. Um, and I've also heard that they'll have a family feature, which I think is great for me because I have a lot of people in my family that like to listen to different music in different rooms at different times. And so, you know, it would be nice to not have to pay for more than one service, which you have to do now. Right. And you're already you're already signed up with Apple like you they are you already have like that. The biggest thing is that first, you know, important thing of getting yourself subscribed into a new service, which I find always really annoying. And that's why I don't subscribe to anything else. But with Apple, everything is really, really simple. You know to trust them. And then you're going to have all your music in one place. I like that. Right. Everything you buy from iTunes presumably will be there and, you know. Will be there and yeah. you're going to, you're not going to have to worry through that. And that's ease of use for me. Right. So I got my Apple Watch yesterday. I've been talking a lot about it. I know that can be annoying to anyone who doesn't want to watch or hasn't gotten theirs yet. So <laughs> right. I promise to keep this short. But one thing I haven't heard a lot about is how often the watch compliments you for standing or exercising. I, you know, I got an achievement this morning for running two and a half miles, which it's fine. I mean, you know, but it just, I got this like award and I was thinking, you know, what is this going to turn into if we're constantly being awarded for everything we do? And since you're a psychotherapist, I had to ask you, is all this praise a good thing or are these kinds of technologies just uh, creating a generation of people who always need to be told that they're doing a good job? Right. I think that it, I think it's a cute idea to try to gamify working out because working out at the beginning can be really difficult to start. And even myself, I started working out just to get the little stickers and achievements that you get to deal with. How does it work? How does it not work? Well, if it happens all the time, after a while, we kind of become complacent to it. You just expect it. And then what could happen is you end up, you could end up with a negative effect of if you don't have, like, you know, you don't have your Apple Watch, you're going to say, well, all of the work that I've done is not going to be transferred. And so it's not going to count. So I'm going to wait. So you could actually end up with a negative side effect to that. The getting constant praise is also a little bit of a negative reward because unfortunately, you know, when you're constantly being fed with praise, you're always expecting to get praised for things that you should not always have to be praised for. And so, yes, it does feed a little bit our own need for getting something, for something we should already be doing and enjoying that. But I guess in the first place, if it just gets you to start moving... It's a good thing, but if it's the only thing that will keep you moving, then it becomes something really bad. How, how did you find getting your your little... Because for me, it just trash-talked me. It was like, you know, you have not achieved your first week of achievements. And I'm like, oh, really? I need to... So, so mine was not that complimentary. It had to, like, knock me down a tier. It's like, okay, we're going to start you off on, like, a lower level than what right. you expect. And I was just, like, sad the entire time. Well, yeah, this is only my first day. So it only did get... Okay. Yeah, maybe I won't. Maybe if I, <laughs> I... But, you know, as I was telling you, you know, I have all this, uh, you know, walking and exercising data that's already in the health app in my iPhone. And I expected, you know, once I had my watch, it would all port over to that so that I would have this um, activity app full of all the activity that I had done. And, you know, I had... I'd run further that morning and it didn't show up. And so, yeah, I guess that's what you're talking about. It's like, we want the, I yeah. want the credit. It's like, I did the exercise. I don't actually need to see it on my watch. <laughs> right. But, but that's what you want. You're like, listen, I want to have this because I did it and now track it and, and say that I did a good job. So yeah, you get a little bit of that knock. I found it was upsetting when the first time I tried to get an achievement, I ran for five minutes just to get the achievement. I should have just stuck it on my dog and let it run. I'm just doing it for the wrong reason. But then it didn't give me the little achievement button for it. And I was really quite upset, like, you know, moderately upset about this. And I've also found myself cheating to get my achievements, which is, oh, I'm just using this in all the wrong reasons. So like the stand up thing, the first thing I, I turned off, I'm like walking around with my arm up, like, you know, just hanging my arm to pretend that I'm standing up. and I'm not. So I, I think that it just makes me better at 
cheating if I'm working right. <laughs> for the well, wrong reasons. I was, I mean, you're a therapist to, you know, presumably you have 50 minute sessions. Like if you're, you know, halfway through and you just stand up, that could be awkward for your patients. <laughs> it could be, it's bad. I, I, I guess you could say I had to turn it off, but I actually just turned it off because I found it annoying every hour. It trying to push me to do something that I'm like, listen, I actually already get up because I'm, I'm a therapist. So I get up every 50 to 55 minutes anyways, but sometimes it would not for some reason register that. And that's the other thing with any reward system is that if you do what you're supposed to and you do not get acknowledged for that, or if it acknowledges it wrong, it can also cause a negative effect of you not wanting to be part of the process and group because you're like, this is not working for me anymore. Right. Well, Georgia, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you write at iMore. You host uh, so many podcasts. Tell, tell us about a few of the podcasts that you are a host of. So I do Isometric. It's a gaming podcast. Um, and then I do the iMore show and I do a show called Review. We talked about Avengers. And then there's also Vector, which we deal with culture and technology. I saw that you talked about Avengers and I assume you've seen it then. Yes. yes. So yeah, I yes, wanted to I've talk about it. it, but then there's spoilers, but you know, maybe offline yeah. we can discuss what, what yeah, we yeah, about exactly. It. The good and the bad. <laughs> right. And so as we talked about before the show, there was a goats, uh, a goats game <laughs> that we didn't get to talk about. So we'll have to have you on again to cover the goats versus zombies game. That is a must. All right. Thanks, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Coming up windows 10. This is the end. And if you loved the video game missed, you'll want to stick around but first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to take better photos, learn to code, master Excel, or publish an ebook. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. And because I've been asked to stop talking about the Apple Watch on the show, you might want to check out Linda's Up and Running with the Apple Watch video. Do you want to sharpen your video production skills? Check out lynda.com's newest courses, including getting started with video production and editing, Final Cut Pro 10.2, Essential Training, and Premiere Pro Guru Professional Trimming. There's also a series on the fundamentals of shooting with the GoPro Hero. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts. That way you can follow along or you can search for an answer and skip right to that point in the video. You can have unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2. Sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. We thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. You might have already heard that this week at the Microsoft Ignite conference, developer evangelist Jerry Nixon called Windows 10 the last version of Windows. The operating system, of course, is not going away. It's just not going to be updated into an entire, entire new numbered OS as they've done in the past. This aligns with what Apple has done since they first introduced OS 10 in 2002. Microsoft plans to start offering Windows 10 as a service, which goes along with their recent announcement to do away with Patch Tuesday for consumers at least. This week, the company says that instead of waiting until the second Tuesday of every month, they'll release security updates as they become available. It's very kind of them. Next, how much would you pay for this computer? $900, $90, how about $9? That's right, TechCrunch reports that a Kickstarter campaign by the Next Thing Company has already met its funding goal to sell a $9 computer that does computer things. It has a one gigahertz processor, 512 megabytes of RAM and four gigabytes of storage. It's open source. The company has manufacturing support from Hacks Accelerator, and they say they'll ship in a year. Maybe we can take a little peek at the video. There it is. They look like nice guys. I already back them. Let's hope that they can meet. They already met their goal, so hopefully we'll see it within the year, as promised. Earlier this week, we told you that Microsoft was reportedly looking to buy cloud company Salesforce. Now sources at Reuters tell us that this is not true. People familiar with the matter said Microsoft thinks Salesforce current market evaluation is too expensive. This week started off with lots of stories about Star Wars in the wake of May the 4th Be With You Monday. Well, what better way to close out the week than with this amazing oh, recreation of the teaser yet. trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's put together by the geniuses at Nuber Goober Gaming using SNES 16-bit graphics. They recreated the teaser shot for shot. 
The audio is from the original teaser, but the images will transport all of you, or at least most of you, or some of you, back to the mid-90s greatness that was the summer Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm sure the people that actually created the real grab, the real film and spent all that money are really excited about that, us enjoying the pixelated version. Keeping up with the 1990s video game theme, news broke this week that Hulu is creating a drama series based on the video game Myst. If you're a fan of the movie versions of the Divergent books, good news for you. The script for this series will be written by Divergent writer of the films, Evan Darty. Producers include Sinister Six and Amazing Spider-Man producer Matt Tolmack. Under the legendary TV branding, the show will explore the origins of the Island of Mist and will mix elements of sci-fi and fantasy to tell the story. There's no release date that has been leaked yet. Yesterday, we talked about a new study in the Journal of Science about Facebook's power to limit our access to opposing political views. Overnight, there was a lot of backlash online about the study, as there often is about studies. I asked you to tell me what you thought. Thanks to Dennis from Berkeley for writing in. Dennis says, Facebook is not the only company that's limiting our scope of content. I could explain more, but a whole book has been written on the topic. It's called The Filter Bubble by Eli Parcier. He does an excellent job explaining this phenomenon and even offers some insight on how this is affecting our evolution. Thank you for writing in. And finally, a heated battle has been brewing over on Reddit about a GIF that surfaced showing what appears to be a bear walking upright with great posture, I might add, while doing a little bit of research into the matter. Okay, that's not true at all. I did no research, but our producer, Jason Clanthes, Googled walking bear, and he was able to find that this is somewhat unique behavior for bears. Could be a result of injured front paws in New Jersey last year. ABC News covered a local bear named Vinny who was capable of doing the same thing. What do you think? Is the gift real? Is it a bear walking upright or is it a person in a bear suit? Let me know what you think of this very important matter at Megan at twit.tv, or you can send email to TN2 at twit.tv. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.